Wouldn't you love to get pure contact shot after shot, just being able to walk into the golf ball like this, not doing too much thinking or effort, swing, and hit a beautiful pured mashed potato shot right down the middle, landing softly on the green. I know you want that, and today I've got a fantastic, easy golf tip for golfers of all skill levels to help you start mashing the ball shot after shot. And guess what? It comes to us from Ben Hogan, and Ben Hogan is a golf swing robot. I want you to start thinking about the path your club is taking in the golf swing. The most efficient, powerful golf swing is going to happen when there's fewer variables, fewer moving parts. So when I swing the club back here, you saw me hit that shot right there. That was really cool, that was really fun. That's why we play golf. You're not seeing a whole lot of lifting or dropping or taking the club in and up and over. No, it's a pretty direct path. The club goes back, the club goes through. And that allows me to be very consistent. You're going to learn today how to get the club to go back and through on one path instead of many to help you be so much more consistent and have more fun. When we look at a swing like Ben Hogan's, and we can certainly admire how smooth it was, how much swing speed he had, and how effortless it was, you're going to notice something very consistent in all of his swings. And that is this. This little fancy device here, this alignment stick, is representing the shaft plane of the club. Now this is the path the club is going to travel on in the golf swing. I want you to envision this right now. And this is going to be similar to a pane of glass. It's not exactly like Hogan's pane of glass, but it's very similar. The idea that we swing the club back on this one path. And I want you to imagine this line extends beyond. So this is the path my club traces back here. And on the downswing, to be consistent, traces back on the same path into impact and through. The reason why you might hit some bad golf shots or shots that just don't feel right, because your path is inconsistent. Your path is all over the place. You know, some golfers will take the club back too low, and then they'll lift, and then the path will go over. So your, your path is really wide, right? The path is going big, big space between the paths. Or you could do the opposite. You could lift the club up and go too under. So once again, big space between those two paths, up and under. But the most consistent players will have the least amount of deviation, the least amount of gap here. So when we look at Ben Hogan, it's like it goes boom, boom. It's backswing on this path, downswing on the same or very close to that same path. And I need you to get this idea because this is what's going to make you a fantastic ball striker. If you haven't already, you should have your awesome little $2 Home Depot alignment sticks out right now. One for your foot line, one for the shaft plane. Now you can trace a perfect shaft plane by taking your posture and making sure that you get as close as you can, place it around where the heel of the club is about two or three feet back. So there's my shaft plane. Now you know right here, with this beautiful practice environment, you know you're gonna nail this. You can't mess this up because you know the path of the club now. If you didn't have this stick, you'd be guessing. You'd need video to tell, and trust me, having a stick is just so much easier for you. Because here I am, take the club back, boom. It's right up the shaft plane, right up that first part. Now I wanna match this at the top of backswing. So, going from here to here, look, I'm like Ben Hogan. Now, he would really approve of this. Bring it right back on the same line. Club head staying behind the hands. And then, once you're here, bring it into impact. Send it. One path. One really consistent path. A narrow path, not a wide path. Narrow path, straight, consistent. Wide path, big misses. And I'll be showing you this more throughout the episode. Taking the club back, stopping here. Matching up the angles. That's my path, really consistent. Bring it through. 
You should be doing this at home or in your backyard or your driving range right now while you're watching this video. So you know that your path is good and consistent. Then we can hit a shot. Let's do it really slowly because you're going to be thinking about the stick. I know you're thinking about it. That's normal. You should be thinking about it. You should be very aware of where this club is. Okay, so I'm getting the feeling of where is the club path? If you're hitting the stick, then your path is either going too low or if you're completely missing the stick way out here, your path is way too out and up. That's where you're going to see a lot of different shots that we don't want to see. So in the simplicity of this is awesome because all I have is a stick for a foot line and a stick for the shaft plane. You can swing it like Ben Hogan too. You can become the range robot like Ben Hogan. And then once you've practiced that, if you do hit the stick, by the way, make sure you adjust, readjust it to match the angle of the club again. Once you've practiced it, go ahead and hit one with that stick there. Now we'll talk about the downswing just after this in a second. Oh, that feels good. Crispy five iron. Now, why is that ball holding a line so well? And it's going high and far and straight. It's holding that line on a string because the paths are closer together. Now, here's what happens if I didn't have that. Let's say I went under the stick. Now, I'm going to take this away, but I can change the path to change the ball flight. So this would be a situation where you're either doing one of the extremes, a wider gap. A very common thing that I see today, which a lot of players struggle with, that's taking the club in, up, and over. So once again, a wide path, a wide gap here. You're going to see more of a slice ball flight. Okay, so there goes that little fade. Not really a fan of that. I lost some power because I was chopping down into the ball. Then we have the path of swinging out to under, which produces a bigger draw. So for both of those two swings, that's a big hook right there. Big gap in the paths, up, under, big difference there, or under, up, and over, big difference there between backswing and downswing paths, you're seeing the biggest amount of curve. That's why if you can narrow up the difference between your backswing and down, downswing paths, get them to be on one path back and through. So here, here, not looping in either direction, you're going to see some very straight golf shots. There we go again, right on the money. So that ball is holding on a string, high, far, straight, because my paths are narrowed up. Let's hit some more shots practicing this now. Shaft plane, back, through, very narrow path. Paths are close together. holding on a string. Wow. Mashed potatoes. Beautiful little push draw, about one yard. Sitting right on top of the flag stick, tap in birdie. And the sound, can't you hear that? Whoosh, whoosh. You can become your own little Ben Hogan if you narrow up your paths. Now one little thing I should talk about. You're going to go through this and it's very new to you because your paths are probably very wide right now. That's why you were inconsistent in the first place. So now you're starting to narrow up your paths. Well, as you start to do that, you need to be aware of what the club is doing and how the club should work in the downswing. Well, the club should never go this way in the downswing. That's steep and over. Unless you're trying to do something like hit a fade, swing it across your body. You're going to lose power that way. I don't want you doing that. So to keep the power built in the swing, you have to keep the club behind you. The club needs to work more down this way. 
And that's why I recommend as you're working through this that you should have some guidance, some way to stay on top of things so that your swing keeps this beautiful path. And one of the best ways to do that is to join the Segudo.golf online golf school because in that there's a structured training program where you can build this swing up, backswing, downswing, and you can do it in such a way that it's structured where you can maintain your swing and refine it over time. You can keep it in good working order. I put a link in the description and comments for you to do that to keep your game in top working condition. So here we are, backswing, downswing, make sure the downswing is the same exact path and then through impact. You'll be sending it. Oh, that feels so good. And I want you to experience that same feeling. You're going to do it just like Ben Hogan had that same feeling. Why do you think he spent so much time on the driving range? Well, it was fun. He was a robot. He perfected it. It was in the dirt. And one of the things that he was big about perfecting was his path making sure that it was like a boom, boom type of path. Narrow, sw narrow paths. Keep them close together and you are going to be hitting some insanely good golf shots. So, so good golfers, you know what to do. You're gonna go out there, you're gonna stripe some golf balls by narrowing up your paths. We're no longer gonna see some big gaps in your paths between backswing and downswing. We're gonna see a very simple laser-like Ben Hogan path, boom, boom, through the golf ball for insanely good strikes. Thanks again for tuning in today. You can click here to join my online golf school to start playing the best golf of your life. Click here, subscribe to my channel, and here are two fantastic selections from the Segudo Golf Archives designed to help you play your best golf right now. I'll see you in a future episode. You'll be sending it.